Hello, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Just so everybody knows, I am on BitChute, B-I-T-C-H-U-T-E. And uh, I can be found there. You just, you know, type in Chaplain Bob Walker and you'll should be able to find me, no problem. Um, I wanted to thank everybody. All glory to the Lord. Um, YouTube just passed 2 million views yesterday. I think I've been up uh, teaching on YouTube for, I think, about 10 years now. So, what can I tell you? But uh, things are getting real. All right, this is going to be, uh, I think, part eight of the Angels series. So let's take a look at the book of Judges. Open up your King James Bible. Uh, Judges is the sixth book in the Bible. If memory serves me correctly. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges. The um, children of Israel, pretty much everybody connected with Moses and Joshua had died. And now a new generation that didn't physically see the miracles of the Lord has risen up. And, well, the book of Judges basically is... God sends a plague upon the people. Not necessarily a plague of disease, but the enemy, the Canaanites of various tribes. And then they oppress the Israel. And then Israel repents and cries out to the Lord to remove these people, and the Lord does. And then they get fat and happy, and then they forget about the Lord. And then the Lord sends more plagues of Canaanites upon them. And that vicious cycle repeats a number of times. Well, guess what? That's what this current government thing is happening. When uh, I was a little child, we had prayer and Bible reading in elementary school when I was in first grade. Very few murders. The crime rate was very low. And uh, they took prayer out. A bunch of men, maybe women, I don't know, uh, wearing black robes that dare to call themselves the Supreme Court, said, oh, we can't have prayer in Public schools, that'll, you know, warp the children's minds, yeah. Well, shortly, that was in around 1964. And then by the late 60s, we had the free love, they called it, and lots of drugs, and the so-called civil rights, where there was rioting all over the country. It was a very, very unruly time. I mean, I was very young when all this was going on, but I used to read the newspapers because my teacher told me my reading was terrible. So to improve it, I started reading the newspaper. So what was it? Samuel Clemens, better known as Mark Twain, said, he said, if you don't read the news, you're uninformed. But if you do read the news, you are misinformed. Oh boy, that guy, he, on that instance, he nailed it. He nailed it on the head. Bingo. So, and then, um, you know, the word pharmacy and pharmaceutical comes from the same root word as in the Greek as sorcery. And, uh, you know, you had people 
dropping acid LSD, lysergic acid diethylamide, uh, all kinds of drugs. And America's crime rate went out of control. I mean, I was living in Miami, and in the late 70s, Miami won murder capital of the United States at least one year, if not two, in the late 70s. I think it was around 77, 78, somewhere around there. So, America and Europe are in the judgment stage. That's why you have this flood of heathen aliens. And let me tell you something. These companies won't even hire Americans down in Miami. No, they hire Cubans. Even my uh, city, I, uh, the city municipality that I work for in Palm Beach County, which is quite, you know, an hour's drive from Miami, um, they hire people from Haiti. You know, these third world people from Haiti, I mean, they give them hiring priority. You know, Haiti, uh, land of voodoo and uh, zombies. So America is in the judgment stage, and so is Europe. That's why we're being flooded with all these heathen aliens, and Europe's being flooded with Muslims. So what can I tell you? And when I talk about this stuff, a lot of times my uh, videos get deleted, but all I know is when YouTube closes down my channel, that's going to be pretty much it. I'm going to start making other plans, and I'm going to probably take that as a sign from the Lord to get out of ministry. So, and because I've try to do what I can so nothing I do is copyrighted so if anybody wants to copy anything that I have feel free to do it spread the word warn the sheep about the pre-trib rapture lie and whatever so all right well oh boy seven minutes and 30 seconds and I've haven't even started the Bible study my apologies all I know is, people, America's under judgment. Stay close to the Lord. And, uh, you know, ask the Lord for understanding and read it. Because, like it says in the book of Amos, there would come a day when there would be a, a famine of hearing the word, the words of the Lord they're not going to hear the words of the Lord on TBN or the 700 Prophets of Baal Club. <sighs> it's kind of depressing, really, when I think about it. The changes that I've seen in my 60-some-odd years on this earth. When, America, when Miami was a beautiful city and people respected each other and Boy, it's there's parts of Miami I won't even go into now. So I hate going down to Miami. Judges chapter 2, verse 1. And an angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal to Bochum and said, I made you to go up out of Egypt and have brought you unto the land which I swear unto your fathers. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you. And that's true. The Lord never broke his covenant with them. Now this angel of the Lord is speaking in the first person. Okay. Verse 2. And ye shall make no league, no agreements, no promises, no contracts, and ye shall make no league with the inhabitants of this land. Ye shall throw down their altars. That's what America, uh, you know, the Lord would be very happy if we threw down all these satanic heathen altars of all these third world heathen aliens that are here. 
Do you know that they've got Hindu temples in the United States? Yeah. Yeah, you think God's pleased that we have groups of people that deny Jesus is the Lord? No, he's not pleased. Ye shall throw down their altars, but ye have not obeyed my voice. Why have ye done this? Wherefore, I also said, I will not drive them out from before you, but they shall be as thorns in your sides, and their God shall be a snare unto you. A snare is a trap. And it came to pass when the angel of the Lord spake these words unto all the children of Israel, that the people lifted up their voice and wept. And they called the name of that place Bochum, and they sanctified there unto the Lord. And when Joshua had let the people go, the children of Israel went every man unto his inheritance to possess the land. And the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua. Now remember, when Aaron and Moses died, Joshua took over. So here it is. Joshua, well, we'll get there. And the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders that outlived Joshua, who had seen all the great works of the Lord that he did for Israel, like the parting of the Red Sea and the drowning of the army and the, the, the plague of flies, the three days of darkness, uh, the frogs, all the challenges that the Lord did against the gods of Egypt, and the gods of Egypt failed. So, verse 8. And Joshua the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died, being an hundred and ten years old. And they buried him in the border of his inheritance in timnath Harris, in the Mount of Ephraim, on the north side of the hill, Gosh, Gash. And also all that generation were gathered unto their fathers, and there arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. Here's the punchline. And the children of America did evil in the sight of the Lord and served the devil. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. That's the, that's the Bob translation. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam. Balaam is just a name for a satanic god. Of course, you could say the children of the European Union did evil in the sight of the Lord and served the devil. Same difference. Verse 12. And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt and followed other gods of the gods of the people that were round about them and bowed themselves unto them and provoked the Lord to anger. And they forsook the Lord and served Baal, which is another name for Lord. You know, I mean, there's Satanists that call Satan Lord, or Luciferians, they call Lucifer Lord. They serve Baal and Ashtaroth. Now, Ashtaroth is the queen of heaven. She's the goddess. She has a lot of different names. Uh, the you know who's call her Lilith. Uh, the Hebrew roots people sometimes call her the she Kina. S-H-E, she, Kina, K-I-N-A-H. They claim that, that she, Kina, is the Holy Spirit, the Queen of Heaven. The King James Bible refers to the Holy Spirit as he. And uh, if you watch what the uh, you-know-whos are doing at the Wailing Wall, they're thrusting their pelvis like they're like somebody would do on their wedding night if you catch my drift. Um, what are they doing? Take a look sometime. It's, uh, 
it's telling. That's why usually when they show them at the wailing wall, they just show them, you know, they're from the shoulders up. They don't show them. Um, I remember on the Ed Sullivan show, they had Elvis Presley on. They used to call him Elvis the pe Pelvis because he would gyrate around. And uh, they only showed him from the shoulders up. <laughs> so, so, Ashtaroth has many different names. Columbia. You ever heard of the District of Columbia? Washington District of Columbia, D.C.? Yeah, Statue of Liberty, Columbia, Columbia University, the nation of Columbia. Who named that country? I doubt the people that live there, the native Indians. Well, maybe they did. I don't know. But um, the Queen of Heaven has many names. Also, her name is Easter and Ishtar. So... Yeah, Easter, as in the Easter bunny, eggs, fertility. Yeah. So, and they forsook the Lord and served Baal and Ashtaroth. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. And he delivered them into the hands of spoilers that spoiled them, and he sold them into the hands of their enemies round about, so that they could not any longer stand before their enemies. People, Solomon said there's nothing new under the sun. When I read the book of Jeremiah and Judges, and then I read the book of Revelation, I know it's, you know, it all ties in together. And I'm nobody special. I mean, I'm just some guy that read the Bible a few times more than other people. That's all. All right, verse 15. Whithersoever they went, the hand of the Lord was against them for evil. As the Lord had said, and as the Lord had sworn unto them, and they were greatly distressed. Nevertheless, the Lord raised up judges, which delivered them out of the hand of those that spoiled them. And yet they would not hearken, they would not listen. They would not hearken unto their judges, but they went a-whoring, whoring after other gods, and bowed themselves unto them. They turned quickly out of the way when their fathers, uh, they turned quickly out of the way which their fathers walked in, obeying the commandments of the Lord, but they did not so. And when the Lord raised them up judges, then the Lord was with the judge and delivered them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge. For it repented the Lord because of their groanings by reason of them that oppressed them and vexed them. Now, Repenting for the Lord means he has a change of mind. But when we repent, we have to change our mind too, but we have to change our mind about sin, the things that, uh, against God's law. That's what sin is. Sin is breaking God's law, his rules. God doesn't repent of sin but we need to. I mean, there's preachers, famous preachers, that will tell you that it just means a change of mind. Well, and then they'll compare themselves with God. I mean, really? You're going to compare a sinful man repenting to God repenting? I don't think so. God doesn't repent of sin. We need to. And they'll tell you it's just unbelief. And I get these people all the time. But uh, if you don't believe that we're supposed to repent of sin, may I suggest you read the second chapter of Revelation, where the church of Ephesus, a believing church, where the Lord told them to repent. 
So what is he telling this believing church to repent of? Their unbelief? I mean, think about it. I get this all the time. Ugh. You know, the Lord is going to be very, very harsh to the great majority of church people. Harsh. Very harsh harsh they bless the people that curse jesus i mean really i mean it it's it's unbelievable and then they teach all these things that are not in the bible for example there is a what they call theology theology is just a fancy word for study of god Theos has reference to God, and then ology is the study of. Uh, it's sort of like when you go to a da lawyer's office, and uh, he says habeas corpus. You know, corpus is where they get the word corpse from, body. And then habeas has reference to uh, bring forth. So you're at a murder trial, and they say, well, bring forth the body so we can examine the evidence to see if this person's guilty or not. And then they use that to charge you 300 bucks an hour. So they throw out these big fancy words. Same thing with doctors. They, you know, throw out uh, these Greek words so that they can charge you uh, $25 for two aspirins when you're in the hospital, you know. But um, that's the thing. God doesn't repent of sin like like we do it's different but the point i was going to make is that there's a thing that they called dispensation dispensations or dispensational theology and the word dispensation comes from the word dispense you ever heard of a soap dispenser well that's what it means uh, and dispensation appears in the bible four times and they write books on these four words. I mean, books. I mean, really? A word that appears four times, you're going to write a book? And then they, they turn it into a period of time. Well, dispensation has nothing to do with a period of time. Uh, it talks about Moses dispensing, or the, the dispensation of Moses. What did Moses give? The law. The Lord gave Moses the law who gave it to Israel. The law. And then it talks about the dispensation of Christ, which was grace. Christ gave, dispensed grace to us. Moses the law, Christ was grace. And then they'll tell you it's all these different periods of time. And then they use that to absolutely negate many things in the Bible. And, you know, it's just, it's just unbelievable. They'll take a plain verse in the Bible... And then they'll explain it away, saying, well, that was in a different period of time. It was in a different dispensation. But it has nothing to do with a period of time. So, uh, God's going to be... Ex and you don't learn this stuff reading the Bible by itself. you got to go to a, a church or a Bible college where they teach you this stuff. Because if you read the Bible just by itself, you'll never... Never get it. Matter of fact, the Jehovah's Witnesses are famous for that stuff. They'll, they'll say, oh, well, if you just read the Bible alone and, and don't read our literature uh, within, you know, six months to a year, you'll be in darkness. Uh, I don't think so. Well, their darkness is the light of Jesus Christ, because when you just read the Bible alone, you're going to realize that they're a bunch of liars, and you'll leave. Matter of fact, the Jehovah's Witnesses uh, said that the world was going to end by the end of, I think it was 1975 by 76, something like that. Guess what? Didn't happen. We're still here. Christ didn't return. So the Lord is going to be harsh to church people like you won't believe. In 1 Peter 4.17, for the time has come that judgment, not wrath. There's a difference. There's a big difference between wrath 
and judgment. Uh, when you catch your kid stealing candy from a store, you know, uh, and you spank their little rear end, that's judgment. When, um, when the Lord throws somebody into the pit of hell, in the flames of hell, the fire, that's wrath. There's a big difference. I, I know what judgment is. I've been spanked so many times. Deserved, but I, I, I've been spanked. For the time has come that judgment must begin, must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall be the end of them that obey not, that obey not the gospel of God? What? Obey? Oh, and there's people who tell you that uh, if you obey the Lord, you're, they call it lordship salvation. Uh, you're trying to earn your salvation. I mean, Jesus said, if you love me, if you love me, keep my commandments. So, if you don't love him, don't worry about it. And, of course, what commandments? You know, the Lord said, uh, he broke down the Ten Commandments into two. Love the Lord and love thy neighbor. And hopefully you're smart enough not to live next door to a bunch of sodomites or Satanists. Yeah, I know. I've covered this many times in the past. All right, let's go back to Judges chapter 2. I guess we'll read verse 18 again. And when the Lord raised them up judges, then the Lord was with the judge and delivered them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge. For it repented the Lord because of their groanings by reason of them that oppressed them and vexed them. Verse 19. And it came to pass when the judge was dead that they returned and corrupted themselves more than their fathers in following other gods to serve them and to bow down unto them they cease not from their own doings nor from their stubborn way boy that doesn't that sounds just like today doesn't it and the anger of the lord was hot against israel and he said because that this people hath transgressed my covenant What's a covenant? It's, it's a, like a contract. The Lord says, if you obey me, I will bless you. If you disobey me, I'm going to curse you. And that's basically a covenant's like a contract. God kept his end of the bargain. Our people did not. Because that this people have transgressed my covenant, which I commanded their fathers, and have not hearkened unto my voice, I also will not henceforth drive out any from before them of the nations which Joshua left when he died. That through them I may prove Israel whether they will keep the way of the Lord to walk therein as their fathers did keep it or not. Therefore the Lord left those nations without driving them out hastily, neither delivered he them into the hand of Joshua. Now I'm all going to go to Judges chapter 3. And I'm only going to read a few verses here. Now these are the nations which the Lord left to prove Israel by them, even as many of Israel as had not known all the wars of Canaan, only that the generations of the children of Israel might know to teach them war at the least such as before knew nothing thereof, namely the five lords of the Philistines. Now, Goliath, the giant, he was of the Philistines. And all the Canaanites and the Sidonians and the Hivites that dwell in Mount Lebanon from Mount Baal Hermon unto the entering in of Hamoth. Now, Baal means Lord, and Hermon is the name of a mountain. And in the book of Enoch, which I have mixed feelings about, um, Hermon, Mount Hermon in the book of Enoch is the place where the fallen angels supposedly made a promise to each other that they were going to 
seduce and intermarry with the human women. And that's what these Genesis 6 was all about, about the giants. There were giants before the flood, there were giants after the flood, and they're tied in with the Canaanites. But not all the Canaanites were giants. Not all of them. So, I don't know, but uh, this area, the Canaanites were bad news. Verse 4, And they were to prove Israel by them, to know whether they would hearken unto the commandments of the Lord, which he commanded their fathers by the hand of Moses. And the children of Israel dwelt among the Canaanites, Hittites, and Amorites, and Perizzites, and Hivites, and Jebusites. Verse 6. Here's the punchline. And they took their daughters to be their wives, and gave their daughters to their sons, and served their gods. Israel intermarried into the satanic seed line. Verse 7. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and forgot the Lord their God and served Balaam and the groves. Therefore the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel and he sold them into the hand of Chushan Rishathaim, king of Mesopotamia, and the children of Israel served, whatever his name is, eight years. And when the Lord of, uh, and when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, the Lord raised up a deliverer to the children of Israel, who delivered them, even Othniel, the son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother. And the spirit of the Lord came unto him, and he judged Israel and went out to war. And the Lord delivered Cushanrishathaim king of Mesopotamia, into his hand, and his hand prevailed against, well, Chush, Han, Rish, Hathim, I guess, I don't know. And the land had rest forty years, and Othniel, the son of Kenaz, died. And here you go again. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord strengthened Eglon, the king of Moab, against Israel, because they had done evil in the sight of the Lord. And he gathered unto him the children of Ammon and Amalek. Now remember, Amalek, God said he would have war with Amalek from generation to generation. That was in the last study. And went and smote Israel and possessed a city of palm trees. So the children of Israel served Eglon, king of Moab, 18 years. So here it is, people. You know, when Israel was oppressed and they cried out to the Lord, he delivered them. And then, like I say, they got fat and happy. They forgot the Lord, and the Lord would send another group to persecute them. Happens every time. Well, this is going to be, uh, I don't know how much time we have. No idea. I don't claim to be a prophet. Lord doesn't show me these things. I w I'm not so sure I would want to know. But um, things could go on for another 100, 200 years. I mean, I don't know. But, uh, you know, time was kind of lost. In the Lord's perfect calendar, you would have 12 months of 30 days each. That would be 360 days. In a perfect circle, you have 360 degrees. But supposedly, according to astronomers, uh, the Earth takes 365 and a quarter days to go around the sun, if you could believe anything that NASA tells you. And that's why every fourth year we have a, a leap year. So, plus they've changed the calendars a number of times. So, you have the Julian calendar, the August, uh, August well, you got several calendars. 
So I don't know. In Daniel chapter 7, verse 23, Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. And the ten horns out of his kingdom are ten kings that shall arise and shall rise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings." And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change, and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. But the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it unto the end. Now this is... Uh, basically ties into, if you ask me, Revelation chapter 12. Uh, a time is a year, and times is two years, and then dividing a time is a half a year. So for about three and a half years, it's going to be hell on earth. But he's going to change times and laws. I don't know how many times they've changed law times in the past. All right, you have the uh, Julian calendar, and then you got the Gregorian calendar. I think the uh, next Bible study I'm going to do is going to be on um, Deborah. She was, well, I did a Bible study on Deborah, come to think of it. Um, yeah, I, yeah, that was a long time ago. That was one of my first Bible studies. So maybe I'll go ahead and skip Deborah, and uh, we'll, uh, I think it's Gib Gideon, maybe it's Gideon, but uh, I think I'm going to close this out, it's been 30 minutes, almost 40, I know I did a lot of rambling in this one, but uh, you know people, it's, the Lord's plan doesn't change any, you know, America's not America is going to see some very very bad times and honestly I think God's people we're going to suffer but not like they're going to suffer they're going to really suffer and um, I feel for those of you that have unbelieving spouses I really do. But just remember something. There was a time we didn't believe either. And, um, you know, everybody comes to the Lord in their own time and in their own way or not at all. So I might be the only one in my family that uh, knows the Lord. There might be one other, but uh, they're in rebellion right now, as far as I can tell. So, all right, well, uh, and do me a favor. Please uh, keep me in your prayers, and uh, I would like to uh, see my situation in Arkansas, where the, uh, that uh, I... Uh, I've got a somebody up there that falsely accused me and has trying to steal all my possessions. I pray that you'll uh, pray that uh, the situation is resolved and that the Lord judge between me and him swiftly. I would appreciate that. All right, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and his only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.